Hey, my name's Tallulah and we're back again with another Museum Without Walls. Me and my sister love Frida Kahlo. We love everything about her, her art and what she stands for. My favourite thing is her determination and her attitude not to be average. To not be normal, to not fit in with society and to be her own person no matter what. She didn't care if her husband was more famous than her. She didn't care that others belittled her work. She didn't care that for most of her life she was simply known as Diego Rivera's wife. She didn't care because she knew that she was Frida Kahlo and that was enough. She really inspires me and my sister, and I hope she can inspire you too. Frida Kahlo was a painter inspired by Mexico, her home country, and known for her many self-portraits. Her paintings often have strong autobiographical elements and mixed realism with fantasy. One of the reasons that we like her paintings so much, and maybe the reason that so many other people like her paintings, is that they are full of her emotions and her feelings. When you look at one of her self-portraits, you feel that she is holding nothing back and that you can see her authentic personality. I paint self-portraits because I am the person I know best. I paint my own reality. The only thing I know is that I paint because I need to. I paint whatever passes through my head without any consideration. Everything she paints, she paints without reservation. Her artwork is a biography of her life and we can see and feel her emotions, her pain, her hatred, her love her political beliefs, her family and much more. She painted about 70 self-portraits in her life. Many people think that Frida's paintings are surrealist, but she said that she did not know if my paintings are surreal or not. But I do know that they're the most frank expression of myself. I think that this is Frida saying that she doesn't care what others think about her or her paintings and that she is her art. At first her paintings look very dreamlike and difficult to understand, possessing enigmatic traits and abstract thoughts meshed together. However, her paintings are not truly surreal because they are not dreams, but expressions of the events and emotions of her life. But they are expressed in a dreamlike way. The paintings are not dreams, but are her reality. Throughout her life, Frida was fascinated with identity and masquerade. And even as a young girl, she appeared in a number of family photos in a man's suit. In her 20s, she began to wear full skirts, shawls, braided hair and heavy jewellery that were traditional costumes of the Tehuana women in southern Mexico, who were known for their matriarchal society. Her choice of clothes and the frequency which she was shown to wear them have come to define how we imagine her today. However, Frida was not from this part of Mexico and her father was in fact from Germany. Yet her choice of clothes was a political statement that supported the authentic Mexican heritage. Her clothes made her stand out from other women in Mexico and were even more unusual when she travelled to America or France. She used her clothes and what she wore to further her art and express herself to the world. Frida was a promising student headed for medical school until she was in a bus accident at the age of 18, which caused her lifelong medical problems. She suffered from serious injuries to her right leg and pelvis, and it was no longer possible for her to have children. Much of her artwork is influenced by her lifelong battle with pain and trauma of the accident. However, during her recovery, she was confined to her bed, and looking for something to relieve her boredom, she returned to her childhood hobbies of drawing and painting. Through her friendship with the photographer Tina Madotti, Frida was introduced to the artist and muralist Diego Rivera. She would later describe their meeting as one of the most important events in her life. Rivera was one of Mexico's most celebrated artists and was renowned for his communist messages in his work. They started a relationship and although he was living with two other women, Frida and Diego were soon married. Frida's parents referred to it as a marriage between an elephant and a dove because of the difference in their size. Diego later wrote, I realised that the most wonderful part of my life had been my love for Frida. Frida and Diego's marriage was anything but conventional, and they both had many affairs. Their unusual relationship was symbolised by their house that they had built, which consisted of two sections joined by a bridge. Frida's side, which was smaller, was painted blue, and the larger side, which was Diego's, was painted pink and white. Diego had an affair with Frida's younger sister, which was very hurtful for her, and after discovering it, she moved to an apartment in central Mexico City and considered divorcing him. However, they reconciled and she moved back in with him. Both of them, however, continued their infidelity. Their relationship could not last and finally Diego asked for a divorce. The exact reasons behind his decision are unknown, but according to their friends, the divorce was mainly caused by their mutual infidelity. Frida made this powerful painting, self-portrait with cropped hair, just months after the divorce. She chose to paint herself without the flamboyant traditional Mexican clothes and jewellery that she usually wore, but instead she is wearing a suit, one that is clearly too big for her. She is also wearing a crimson shirt, just like the ones that Diego wore. However, she is not completely in male clothing, as she is still wearing high-heeled shoes and we can see one dangling earring. 
Across the floor, we can see locks of hair, and a braid lies next to her chair. In the background, strands of hair are everywhere, and it seems that each one has its own life, and could be writhing across the floor. Frida is holding a pair of scissors in her lap, and it looks as though she has been cutting off her own hair. Frida was not imagining how she would look with short hair, as in reality she did cut her hair, which Diego had told her many times he liked. She also, for a time, gave up her traditional clothing. This is seen as her cutting Diego out of her life, in the form of her hair, which she loved so much. Across the top of her painting, Frida has written the words to a popular Mexican song. They say, See, si, if I love you, it was because of your hair. Now that you are without hair, I don't love you anymore. Are these words supposed to be coming from Diego because she really has cut off her hair? Or are they coming from her to mock the man who divorced her? Frida looks directly out of the painting and at us. I don't think she looks angry or upset. Instead, I think she looks calm and in command. She knows what she is doing and she is owning it. She knows that what she is doing is something that will upset Diego and she doesn't care. Given her love of dress and masquerade, it is apt that her reaction should be to change her image and slightly shocking that her choice of image should be the man who has left her. She is a woman who doesn't need a man and she has chosen to look like a man to show that she can do anything that they can do. When I look at this painting in the chair that she is sitting on, I am reminded of Van Gogh's yellow chair. Unlike Vincent's painting, Frida is a very real presence in the painting and she inhabits it completely. Both of them put their emotions into the painting and use bright and expressive colours. I think that for both Van Gogh and Frida, art is a gateway for them to escape the unhappy things in their lives. Her recently cut hair has been placed around the chair and has been even been tied to the top of the chair. It is not that it has been cut off and thrown around, but it has been carefully placed. This is a woman who is in charge of her emotions and her actions. She has not abandoned her femininity. She has kept some of her jewellery and her heels. Her hair, although short, is still tidy and well styled. This is a woman who is not losing herself, but is taking on the outward signs of an unkept man who doesn't care about his appearance and making them look better. Not only does she not need Diego, but she is better than him. Frida moved out of the house she shared with Diego and was determined to earn her own living as an artist. This was the start of a very productive period for her as an artist. She created larger canvases such as this one and opted for more sophisticated technique. In every way, she was going to be as good, if not better, than her painter ex-husband. However, despite her assertion of confidence and independence, she did not remain single for long. She and Diego remarried less than a year after their divorce, but this time things were different. They had their own homes and very separate lives, and they both continued to have affairs. They remained married until Frida's death, which Diego described as The most tragic day of my life. Frida's reputation as an artist only really developed later in her life, and during her lifetime she was primarily known as the wife of Diego Rivera, and as an eccentric personality among the international and cultural elite. However, after her death, her paintings have become increasingly well known. They are unique because they capture emotions that many of us feel, can understand, and which can relate to our lives. However, this painting is even more unique because it captures the feeling that many women experience as well. Her challenge to Diego, that she could be like him, only better and still feminine, has been justified.